We are building a model railroad from scratch. In the last episode, I have grassed the mountains and the landscaping using an electrostatic grasser. That way, the grass is standing upright on the meadow. And now it is time for the trees. As you can see, I have planted some trees on the system already. Some are just standing there and some others are permanently installed. I have glued some trees to the ground and some are screwed on. You can do it as you like. I brought some trees with me, I unpacked and assembled them. I'm talking about these cypresses here in the train station area. Looks a bit like Italy. It is supposed to be the Bavarian train station Weissenbach, but now it looks like Tuscany. And that are these trees by the manufacturer Busch. And they actually are poplars, that's what it says on the box. I saw them in the shop and bought them. You can glue them to the system using a hot glue gun. And I placed them here, right next to the bumper. Was a bit too close. I might plant this one here at the side. It might look good there. Just take the hot glue and apply a tiny amount on the system and then you press it on for a couple of seconds. This one will stand right here. Later, I will conceal the tree trunks and bark by planting bushes around them. Now press for a moment, otherwise the tree might fall over and before that make sure the grass glue has set. And before that please wait until the plaster is dry, otherwise you will have an ugly hole in your platter. I also found this, cute little fruit trees. They are from the manufacturer Noch and they are ready made with the flock medium. That's what they look like. I used similar kind of trees before, this burg here for example and this true fruit here at the side. Uh, we could plant that here for example. That's a good spot, you can see that in the camera. Another good spot would be right beside my selfie taking woman. She's taking selfies with a flashlight every time the ICE passes by. We installed that in one of the last episodes. That's operated through a circuit track. Every time the train passes by, the contact is triggered and the woman starts taking selfies. You can watch that again in one of our last episodes. This tree would look nice right next to her. But that blocks our view on our selfie woman, so maybe a little bit more over here. I may as well plant it here at the side. I think I like this spot the most. Looking from here, that's very nice. Maybe a second one here to loosen up my poplars here. There as well, apply a small amount of glue and then fix it here with light pressure. Make sure it is upright, crooked trees are rather seldom in nature. Didn't work and I said fix on and I didn't fix it on myself. More hot glue. As I said, make sure the ground material is dry and solid. Don't work too fast, maybe let everything dry for a weekend or so. Maybe continue after one week. It might take longer that way, but the result will be better. What else do we have? Here I have simple fir trees. I juiced these, they are inexpensive and rather uniform and triangular. But uh, you can use them in the background on the mountain. They are further away there. So you can buy different kind of trees with different prices. You have these simple trees, they are called bottle washers. The name is rather disrespectful since they look much nicer than bottle washers. You can get really cheap models. These are a bit nicer. And then we have the higher quality trees. These are very tall trees with many details. Or you can build them yourself. Here I have something from Heki that's a pine tree model kit. And you can add the flock medium yourself. Um, we will have a look at that in just a moment. We can use that as well and I move this locomotive to make room for this. I have more. That's pile from Heki. You can use that to shape deciduous trees. We can also use it to green the tunnel portals or in areas like this to conceal spots or to create moss and grasses. You can use that too to even out a little bit. I will start unpacking now. I have started to build up some trees. That's this model kit here in my hand. But that's not a pine tree, that's a deciduous tree. And they are blank trees. And you can use this pile to foliate them. I painted them with gray color to make them look older. I will apply some hot glue here at the side. You won't see that afterwards when the flock medium is attached. And then you can attach that. Best to bend its shape after you glue it and not before. The glue was still now, thanks a lot. And now put it in there. Press it on a little until it's tight. 
And now we have this blank tree and we can place it somewhere on our system. So I can either buy one of these ready-made trees, that's an easy way, or I can build one myself using such a model kit. I could plant it next to my woman here. Let's do that together right now. I'll take this tree and what we need now is a special flock medium glue and a brush. And we will apply the glue on the tree. I'll put the things here and here is the flock medium. Uh, the color fits very nicely. It will look like a beach. I take some out if some fibers fall on the tracks, vacuum them later. Best not to do this on the tracks. I'll get an old curtain to make sure nothing spills on our tracks. I recommend that you don't do that on your system, but on a separate table. I lay down this tree here that makes it easier to work with. And now I pick up some glue and apply it evenly over the tree. Start at the top and work your way down. As you can see, the glue is dripping. You should always use an underlay. You don't need much. I apply a little bit of glue all over. The shine areas indicate the presence of glue. The dry glue will be transparent. You can buy colored one too. If you want to paint the trees at the same time and give them a natural color. I put the brush aside and will use some of this pile and stretch a little bit. The more you do that, the better you can work with it. And now I can put this over it. I'll use some more. You will have pile on your fingers. That stuff sticks to your fingers. I'm holding this at the treetops. Here I didn't use enough glue. And then you put this over. That takes a couple of minutes. You might need 10 to 20 minutes for one tree. I think you can get an idea of how that works. That looks very realistic. I need more glue here and I'll apply more glue there and then I put this pile over it. You can help yourself and hang it to these spikes. That's a task that can be done in between when you're not working on your system. If you have some time, you can do this. A wonderful task for a Saturday afternoon. Okay, some more here. The tree is still very bald, but I think you can imagine the result. We can finish that together, but I can finish it on my own as well later. I also want you to show other uses for this material. I let this half finished tree stand there for now and I let it dry. And now I'll show you something different. Let me show you different quality levels. That's simple quality, but perfect to fill in. They are made of wire mesh and you can use them to place them here at the site. Let's do that right now. They look good there. We can work with bushes as well. I'll place this aside. Now I drill a small hole into the plaster. Not too deep. A shallow hole is enough. And now we apply hot glue and glue this tree in the hole. I always wrap this to avoid sticky threads. And now we press it in there. Press a few seconds to make sure it is upright. That's looking good. So we take a second tree and place it there. And we do the same thing again. Hot glue again and stick it in the hole. And that's already a big difference. And we can use some special items. We still want to do some decorating on the system. Let me get the pile as you can see. It comes in different colors. This one is brighter than the other one. Two different shades of green. That's a different foliage from another manufacturer. And we can combine these and create meadows with it. Let's do that. I put this aside. You can pluck it off and I create a green meadow with it. I can place that here at the site. And that's good to use if you want to conceal certain spots. Here, for example, we have a not so nice looking edge from this platform. What do we do here? We use a little bit of glue and apply it to the unclean area. And then I can conceal it with the pile. So I'll carefully apply some glue here. Since it is transparent, uh, when it is dry, it is no problem. We could also have some here at the edge. I'll have some glue here and can usually find undergrowth in such places. Now I take some of this pile, just a little bit and stretch it. And then I place it on the glue with the fingers or with tweezers. The fingers are sticky afterwards. And now we have that spot concealed. We could also do that with this edge here. We can use some of this other pile and put it on here. And that way we create different bushes and meadows. 
That looks much nicer. The white glue will disappear. The result will be a completely different looking grass. You can model in many different ways. Let me see if I can show you that on the other camera. Let me see if I can change the focus, maybe over there at the tunnel. Perfect. Now we can do the same thing here at the side. And we will use this foliage again. I need my brush again and apply some glue here at the side. Here the gap between the rock and the plaster is still very large. That doesn't look very realistic. So I'll have some glue there and now I use my pile again and place it there. I want to have moss there. I put that on this area. And here as well. This looks like ivy or wild wine or undergrowth growing down there. That way I can conceal all the gaps that remained after plastering. You cannot prevent that from happening, but with this you can set highlights on your landscape. We want people to think that's a picture from nature, since they cannot tell the differences anymore. You can also work with different colors. That's already looking very nice. I think you can see that. The same thing can be done here in the gap between the parking space and the meadow. So I'll apply glue again all along. Let me change the focus. Now you should be able to see that clearly. And I will put some moss on here as well. The white glue will be transparent later. And that way I can make this transition between the parking space and meadow look much more realistic. The same can be done with a bumper. It has a high ballast embankment. I'll apply some glue on there. I want that to become overgrown. I'll apply glue all over it. I don't have to worry about the contacts, since trains cannot drive there. And now I'll shape that with this foliage. I'll put that over the complete area. It's standing there for a long time now. Now it is looking overgrown. Looks completely different. For more realism, I will use a different color. You can combine different manufacturers for better results. I'll place them in the middle. Also great for spots like this, where you can still see some of the plaster. I simply apply glue everywhere I see plaster in the meadow. I can change the colors a little bit and even things out. Don't worry, the white color will disappear. And I place my green stuff on the glue. And this will look like bushes growing there in the meadow. Some more here and the meadow looks different now. I still have to fix this tree. I can do the same thing here. Let's switch to the other camera. I can put that around the tree trunk. So I can have a bush growing around the tree. You cannot see that um, I'll do this without the camera. So I'll glue this on there and place the pile around it. Now that looks much more overgrown that way. Let me change the camera again. Now you can see the result here. I put that around the tree. I'll have to glue the tree again later. Let's see what to do with the large tree that I still want to unpack. You can buy trees of different heights. I worked mostly with low trees. I have two very high trees. Let me unpack this one. I usually build low up front and high in the background. And that looks very good, especially when you take pictures of your system. These two trees have the same height. We can install them here up front. But that way you have a large tree wall right up front. If you install the trees in the background, the perspective is much better. Let's switch to another camera. That's a spot I would like for these trees. That way we can create a spatial depth. Or maybe here on top. That would look very nice as well. That way we will have different perspectives. I think I like that the most. So we have a real thicket in front of the train station. Try out different spots and I believe that would look great if you take a picture of your system. I always try to look at things through the camera viewfinder and what the scene would look like on YouTube. What do you think? Is that a good spot? I will install this one for sure. It looks good there. I already installed some trees on my test system. I only had a few, but looking at these many trees and how good that looks, I recommend using many. If you ask me, we could have trees everywhere. I'm a fan of having more trees and less buildings, but you have to decide for yourself what you want. A nice system or a diorama with lots of green stuff, that's just great. 
Okay, now I have to support the poplar until the glue has set. And now we wrap the foil around it. Looking good from that perspective as well. Okay, let's continue. Here I have bushes. We can use them too. So there are much more items you can use. Here we have a tuft of grass. We can also use that. You can make these tufts yourself. Last episode we talked about grassing. What you can do is to place some drops of hot glue on a board and then you could place electrostatical charged grass fibers on it. You can find nice tutorials on this topic on YouTube. That way you can make your own tufts of grass. So here you have a nice little meadow. And now I will take a tweezer and pick one of them up. And now I apply a drop of hot glue on the backside. And then I can place it where I want it. I can have a flower meadow up there or we place them next to our selfie woman, creating a flower embankment. Nice to see some flowers there. The more different colors you use, the nicer the result will be. You can conceal a lot with that as well. If you have gaps somewhere like here next to the signal, you can plant such a tuft in it. I might not use flowers there, maybe something like this. An ordinary green plant you can find on the field. If you want, you can plant rose beds next to our butcher's shop that we have back there. A rose bed would look nice. We can create a flower meadow there that will look nice. Uh, you can get very creative with this. And that's what I will do now. You are welcome to watch while I'm having a glue party <laughs> and stick the system with trees, bushes and flowers. And in the next episode we will see what other decorations we can still make. Our city is still a ghost town. There are no people there. Not much has happened there yet. We need population and maybe we can talk about other decoration ideas. I want to give you more inspiration on this topic. Okay, that's looking nice here. Let me change the camera. This here, I am very pleased with the result here. This spot will dry. And don't use the same item over and over again. Take different grasses with different colors. I will use the greener one from the same packaging. Then we will have more variety. And not just a yellow area and a green one. That's why I will use a different one now. Here we have a white spot. We will glue this over that spot. We can use more of that over there. I will take a second one and place it there on the top by the tunnel. I take a third one as well. That's very detailed now. But that's what makes the difference on our system. You cannot have enough of that on your system. You can place them close together to create thick undergrowth or larger bushes. And the combination of the pile, the foliage and the tufts of grass makes a great impression. That should be enough here. I'll take a different color now. I place that further up in the mountains. I will place a second one next to this one here by the signal. You now have all the options. You don't need limit yourself. You have a lot of tufts in a package. Let me count. 24 times 4. So a lot. You can do a lot with one packaging. Better to use more than too little. Okay, careful now. Press lightly with the tweezers. That's looking good. I will leave it that way. All right, we meet again in the next episode when we decorate everything. I'm looking forward to your comments. Tell us your tips and also ask your questions. We will answer your questions. The colleagues from Merklin will read them and answer them during the show. Take care. Until next time. Goodbye.